And he said, he, he said, and here's why I look at it, getting the hell off of it. He said, he goes, could he die on the ventilator? Or could he die off of it? Sure. He said, but he might not. He said, and at least he could eat. He wants to eat. He hasn't ate since January. Everybody's quiet. I'm so haunted. <laughs> Something wrong? Well, the, the everybody mouth, got quiet all of a sudden. The mouth like, isn't working, so we'll have to manipulate that. From As usual, I was the kid that got yelled at and said, "Hey, help!" Without talking to me. Is this mine? I don't see it. Yeah, it's not. Huh? It's there. Okay. Oh shit! Okay. I got a big enough mouth. Okay. See how the politics goes. School around. I don't know if they had to see Billy in the city. I don't know if they had to go to Billy in the city. Oh. I think it was just busy. Six o'clock. I'm all about meetings starting on that. So we're Too many work. We'll get on Zoom meeting and they're waiting. What do you mean? Yeah. We're waiting on Zoom. Never mind. But somebody calls me. I'll get started here this evening. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have a special. Uh, Group in the back here, uh, I'd like to welcome you, especially uh, government class. Ah. Here to take some notes, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, Claymont City School Board of Education regular meeting, April 19, 2022, 6 p.m. Roll call. Mr. Cottrell. Here. Mrs. Grandison. Here. Mrs. Host. Present. Mr. Miles. Here. Mrs. Wolf. Here. Right, six o'clock. All stand for budget. What is to the flag, states of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Accommodations. Uh, accommodations. I wanted to commend, commend and thank Travis Morrison. Um, he volunteers to put in some handicapped parking out the ball field. Um, all at his own expense or family's expense with the equipment and the gravel. So appreciate that out of Travis. Um, Travis has done some work on the ball fields uh, last year and then this year also, um, but really want to thank Travis. Um, just want to kind of acknowledge the Tuscarawas County Sports Hall of Fame inductees. And these are the, um, the Claymont or Urexville Denison uh, inductees for this year. Jeff Arthur, Jeff Arthur Jordan Bezozzi, Sam Fausto, Bob McCullough, uh, Joe Pangrazio Sr., uh, Dean Sensenbach, um, Dave Smith, Eric, Tok Eric Token, and Don Wright, and the 1981 Girls State Championship team. So congratulate to all of those, and there will be a seminar sometime later on in May uh, for that induction. And also to acknowledge our Buckeye Career Center students who um, have placed well at uh, a regional and state competitions. Um, uh, Luke Cayley, he uh, was a FCCLA regional and state qualifier. Uh, Skills USA um, state qualifier were Adam Bowles, um, Tatum Kandry, um, Kayla Pontrell, uh, Dylan Link, uh, Chasey Milburn, and also Olivia Swiger. And also the BPA national qualifiers were Xavier Pittman. So congratulate them also. And then in a couple of weeks, I know a couple of those students that were on the uh, Buckeye Career Center Awards, they will also be receiving the Buckeye Career Center Foundation Award, a couple of them. So I don't know if they know just at this point in time yet, so I'll kind of hold off on that. So. <laughs> Tell them steal there. Okay, this time we'll get into the administrative uh, reports of any principals would like to highlight we have your reports. Any take? <laughs> sure. Uh, I wanted to publicly thank all of the committee members that were in the ELA committee for the review. We've been looking at the curriculum for three months, trying to find the best for the same one. For our six to 12, they have chosen the wrong book study state. Real numbers, real performance, or true growth. We were able to come and select the ingredients in the five. We compromised the only 
donations to the bank, clients, writing, selling, they script this program that we think we need. We're going to put this up in the field with our portable <laughs> uh, this it's in several of the reports, but the uh, related arts fair uh, was a huge success, and I want to thank all the teachers and all the students who participated in that. Um, I know in a couple of the reports there were some pictures of that, but it was uh, it's been several years coming because of COVID, and um, so it was a huge turnout. Uh, so hopefully we'll continue doing that, and, and as it grows and gets better, but we can highlight our artistic. Uh, talents in our students and I know that with uh, also we've had the last in March our, we have a kind of a partnership with Novellus and our fourth graders have taken a trip over to Novellus um, to kind of look, take tours and, and uh, to look through that uh, we're trying to develop um, or continue to develop that partnership and I know that they're asking for our high school video class to start working on some safety videos for their employees. So they'll come in and form and film them and make those safety videos for them. So that's something that we're proud that Novellus has been kind of helping us with in the for the future. I just want to piggyback on the arts festival because that, that was really awesome. I actually took a picture. Uh, I thought this was a really cool um, art project. They, they designed a tree and this one happened to be Owen Lindsay in seventh grade. And it was like a tree all about them and their family and their life and the things that were important to them. And there were multiple. I just, this was the first one I saw. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that. And I, the art, I mean, it was everywhere. Like we were watching um, the kids sing and people were trying to see their, trying to find their kids' stuff. So by the time I left, I had like chalk all over my pants because I was way too close to um, the side there. But I, I do want to, commend the art teachers and all the students in our district that that was really cool it was it was neat to see so. we have a rep here for the ca tonight slides hi so we decided to have a couple more meetings start highlighting um our teachers and so we're having
and being excited to give back to her district, so my district, my community, and raise my kids. So just a lot of pride. Um, they want to be pride in our Thank you. Oopsie, uh, rep. Uh, oh, she wants to touch on a little bit of the grounds or the grounds committee over there. <laughs> yeah, just maybe on the um. We did a capital looking at the capital plan and laying out some of the projects we have. Well, we've come to find that a lot of our uh, dishwashers and equipment like that, it's very, very outdated. And uh, we're putting together a plan to get those repaired. Uh, parts are hard to come by. Uh, some uh, units, once they fail to work for us, they will have to go away. So we'll have to upgrade. Am I correct, Beth, on that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question for you. We had, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're upgrading some ovens at the middle, you know, the intermediate, intermediate. intermediate. intermediate because we'll have three grades over there versus the two grades. So we're going to upgrade that. We are looking at doing some painting in the high school gym, uh, which I think is getting ready to be started here soon. Huh? Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> We're going to be doing some painting in the gym. We are um, looking at kind of a whole budget. We Eric went and gave us a graph of what all the um, Mr. Henry he gave us a graph of the age of the equipment in the um, kitchens and all the kitchens. So yeah, we're also looking at new flooring or over at. Trenton Ave, no, Eastport. <laughs> it's from Boney. At Eastport um, School, the cafeteria needs complete new flooring done. And I think we're getting estimates on that now, kind of like that garage door. I call it epoxy. Yeah, it's like it. You see the commercials where they do the. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Nature Stone, yeah. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, on the commercials. So something similar to that. So those are some of the projects we're going to be getting started on. Um, there's a lot of other things that are uh, we're looking at. We're kind of waiting to see, get some estimates to fill those. How long is it going to uh, take to paint the gym? Because aren't there functions scheduled well, in there? The we're trying to get it done. We have a two-week window, isn't it? We're trying to get it done before. Because there's a um, right. Yeah, the foundation, huh? and isn't there a music thing in there too? I thought I had on my calendar. Yeah, so we're, we're pushed, but we have to have it done before summer, before the summer basketball program or the so we have the short little window. And I just want to make sure it's going to be done. That the rest of the stuff's not going to get pushed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Major scout. At least we don't have to worry about what I just know the gym the, will be the same. I know how everything else it works in uh, resources and time and uh, labor. So it's two weeks, and I hope it does work out. Right well, I, I certainly don't want management. anybody else. To get I think this company is willing. Sorry. I'm okay. No, there, no on I, my calendar, I have things that are at that high school yeah. that I've yes. been informed of. And so yes, it threw so me for a loop when I got that. That's why we had to get it into that, that little frame. And, yeah, that's, and we, I think, Beth, you informed them that we have, we have to be done. Yeah, they, they have, um, they, they pretty much, set, you know, use the, the calendar, Monday through Friday calendar, but knowing they would have Saturday and Sunday available 
if they needed to, to catch up and keep on the timeline there. We were very clear on this is the window and that's the only time we have. So they're starting tomorrow morning at 730. Do we have a date for the reschedule of the first grade program? It's, it's still happening back on that date. Okay. Oh. Who's painting it? Were they not available during spring break or? I keep turning this off. Um, there were, I probably contacted 10 companies and no one could do it in the time frame that we had. So um, I just felt that, uh, like we said, there's, these, there's about a three week window in the entire year that that gym can be used. And I mean, we're, it's never convenient. That's why it's not been done for, it's probably needed done for a couple of years now. And we've just never been able to make it happen. So there'll be a little bit of, you know, it, it inconveniences the gym class a little bit, but I think everybody's kind of willing to kind of give a little bit and um, you know, it'll have kind of a similar look to what the weight room has in the field house, the white the, and some orange accents and the brown. So I think it'll spruce it up a good bit when, once it's done. After that, maybe just to add a little bit. That's nice to working on so it's kind of it's ever evolving, and um, so we listen. I give you an updated one, which <coughs> so um, revenues are on the top. Activation extended curves. Um, the budget up for the forecast update next month. I'm trying to get the ballpark shot of what we want to spend. Under that, so we constantly. Working with this, moving things out if we need to. But one big thing we had to do this year is we ordered that truck for the maintenance department back in October, and we just found out that it was a manufacturing line. So it's not even a As the boilers, have you, the boilers across the street started, or that was approved last uh, meeting in March? Yes. Um, well, they start, um, we're waiting on better weather to drain the line so we can get started inside um, until we still need heat right now. So we're kind of waiting on the weather to break. But they have, they've assured us that the boilers will be here in time. Uh, we'll be starting uh, the intermediate first. And that'll be first as soon as you know everyone's out. Um, we have some repairs to do once the lines are all drained. So that's what we want to get started on, hopefully in we want to do that in May, and I just have to wait for non-freezing nights to do to train those lines. I'm hoping it gets here any time now. Um, I did want to add um, a couple other things, just or one other thing from uh, the report that I gave you when I under like looking forward. I usually put under that section. I talked about some things that uh, we were looking at. Um, we had two things that we did do over spring break. Um, one was we scoped Eastport's. Uh, lines all of their uh plumbing lines in that go to all of the restrooms and um i was good news bad news but the main lines are good uh we're not going to have to replace those um the urinals that are all cemented into the floors do need replaced so i'm working with plumbers to get um stuff with that to do over the summer to have all of the urinals replaced i think there's about nine of them in the building and that'll um involve cutting some floors and things like that, but just right where those urinals are. And then the other thing that we did that was actually good news is we got into the um, up in the ceilings at Trenton to make sure there was no mold or anything in. We had so much humidity in the, in that building. Um, I was concerned about the pipe wrap and it trapping any moisture in there and any mold. And we we went through a lot of different places and there was nothing. It was all good. So I was pleasantly surprised with that. So 
happy about that. Um, East Ports building. Yes, they have the um, all of their urinals are cemented. Uh, they're ground ones and they're cemented in the ground. So there's very can't get to the plumbing underneath those. And those are from 19. I think they're the original 1960 um, fixtures. So um, that's what I have a couple people coming this week um, to give me some prices on doing that. So we really want to make that a focus this summer of getting those replaced before the kids move in. With the board uh, deciding to go in the direction we're going with our ESSER, um, what uh, will the offices, if uh, the primary and elementary, be moved, or will they be? Are they going to stay the same, or are we? What's what's the? I mean, I'm lost here. I mean, okay. we just decided last last uh, you know in March here. What what are what what are our improvements? I guess that was that was discussed for the future as far as um, taking a couple of those areas right outside the doors, turning those into a better office area for safety purposes when we enter and connect to the building. So those that we could actually do that too. Um, right now, I don't think there isn't a building that once someone enters the building, they have free access to the whole entire building. So what we'd like to be able to do is particularly the East Fort building and the Trenton Avenue building, be able to take it and then have an area where people can enter the building, but they're still not access to free range, so then they can still get buzzed into the office and sign or file out. That is in the future. Yeah. Okay. Is it happening with the ESSER funds? That, that's the plan. Yes. Okay. So it will happen by 2024, though? Yes. Okay. Yeah, on that capital budget sheet that I think she has out there, are two columns, uh, one that says it, you've got five years of capital um, data and then you've got SR2 column and an SR3 column. And those are estimates that, you know, some of that stuff has been done and that's marked red. Some is committed and that's yellow. And then the others are just estimates that are put out there. Um, we have, other than the boilers, have been prioritized to go first. Um, some of the other stuff, um, we just really, there'll be a lot going on next summer. Um, like air conditioning units, the chillers, they have a one year lead time. So we're, I mean, as soon as probably July one rolls around, um, because we really try to not run things over two fiscal years, we'll be looking at getting pricing and ordering some of these long lead time items that would be for next summer and going there. So that's, that's on some of these line items. Talked about the security at the meeting. We talked about the security cameras and things, and that was basically at the high school level. At the high school, we're high finishing school. at. That's not ESSER. Um, no, but because things that we are moving that I let Mrs. Khan know that this week, that because of some of the items that we've already committed to in yellow, but aren't going to be here for a while until next fiscal year. Yeah. I didn't want to lose that money. So we're moving some flipping some things around. The security cameras have a shorter lead time and we can get those in before. So we move that up and moving like the truck back to next year. So but it's it's on this sheet, all of the different things. Right. We discussed that, but you said yes. it wasn't coming in possibly. Yep. Until yep. next fiscal year. Yes. Mr. Walker, did you able to get that your front entrance door fixed or is that yeah. Get in, or I can get in, or not have someone come down and let me in. Mrs. Lane, on the uh, technology side or whatever, did you, uh, when Mrs. Host asked the February, February board meeting about our board emails getting filtered or whatever, I, I just noticed today our board emails came through, or I've noticed there's multiple emails that came through today. That's the first time I've saw it. I, I mean, nobody has said anything. I know I followed up with I mean, Cindy uh, after yeah. that last um, meeting and the time, the situation that she brought up was a Yahoo issue and 
we discussed that and we've t- done tests and everything with Yahoo accounts and everything went through fine. Um, I've not heard of any other issues that anybody has brought to my attention. So I just know Mr. Miles replied to one. I just saw, I just got up before work on the meeting. I saw that he replied to an email that someone sent and I saw a couple, like two or three that we, the board got today that I haven't had a chance to read yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for, I don't get those. So, I mean, is everybody else getting emails and everything? Yes. I haven't had a bunch lately, but I, I okay. got some today. I okay. today. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's okay. yeah. Yeah. The uh, <clears throat> the athletic committee had met on uh, March 29th, I believe it was, and. Uh, one of the highlights, uh, I'm a little excited about it, a lot, I guess. Um, calling it the Wall of Fame. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you're when not, you, huh? You're not wrong. Okay. So when you enter into the gym and head down past the um, trophy case, what is that? The um, west, what is that? What east, end is that? East, Towards east, the um, east. cafeteria doors yeah. on that wall is where we're going to mount a go bigger, go home. 50, 80 inch, I'm pushing for, no, uh, 50 inch TV, maybe something like that. And I had to leave that meeting. So I'll let it would be an interactive, it'll be an interactive board. So what we're planning on doing is having class 2022, um, hall of fame, claim on hall of fame inductions. So, um, we'll, our athletic committee will putting out a flyer to nominate, um, past coaches, past teams, past people contribute, really contributed. The athletic council then will review those, and they have set a number of, of um, inductees each year. So they may go large the first couple of years and then uh, scale it down. Uh, but the interactive board would be you can go into, once it's all set up, you go to the board, you push the interactive board for class of 22, and it would have a bio of the people that were there. Then the following year would be the class of 23, and the bio would be, would, would be there. And we're looking at having uh, like a small induction uh, ceremony. Um, we kind of settled around uh, basketball season because of the weather and being inside, and that's where the board would be. Um, we're hoping to roll that out here before school ends. Um, we can get that information out, and we can meet, reconvene September-wise, and select, and then November, December, have our ceremony and our induction. Uh, but the Booster Club is uh, looking at picking up the, uh, the interactive board uh, for us, and uh, we're excited about it. So uh, just be thinking of, I mean, we have a list of people that were the Sports Hall of Fame inductees here. Um, you know, so some of these people may be the ones that are joining the ranks of uh, Claymont and we're looking at Eric Bill Dennison type of thing. But I think Bob McCall is, is the uh, only All-American that we had uh, that uh, played at Ohio State that's from our area. So that's a huge accomplishment. That's kind of our highlight from the athletic council. It's, a, it's evolving. It's a good thing. Yes. Well, at the booster club meeting, we, we that was brought up. Did you guys? Did you ever get a link to see what it looked like, or did you guys? Did Justin send it? I haven't seen it yet. Yes, uh-huh. sent it. Either. My presentation. You can do your presentation. All right, so on the presentation to have, I just want to kind of give, give you guys some updates on telehealth, uh, bills and less legislation, and we kind of a small ESSER um, update. Um, the telehealth, um, the Ohio Department of Health uh, hasn't had a grant that uh, Alton Hospital had asked us, um, Husky Valley, 
Malvern and um, Minerva to participate. And it asked a couple other schools that had backed out uh, for one particular reason. And, as, and Carrollton already had the telehealth um, with their buildings, but they'd asked us to become a part of that. We have a $1.9 million grant that will help bring these services to our area. And, and it's a big push from the Ohio Department of Health and ODD for telehealth. But two primary objectives were to increase access to telehealth care and easy to use. So what it's going to provide, our students can remain at school and return to class when appropriate and a parent consent required. Parents are welcome to join the visit online and the school nurse will assist the provider during the visit. The, the grant was written specifically that we would split a school nurse for Tuskegee Valley certain days. Uh, so there's no expense on our part as a district for this. So we would be splitting and also Minerva and Malvern would be splitting a school nurse uh, in the future. What kind of ailments are we looking at? Um, just cold, sinus infection, rash, respiratory, uh, migraines, muscle strains, allergies. So we're not looking at anything that's uh, uh, large, large in scale, um, but they would have, you know, come and take a look at this. They have a cough and want, and they have a list of things that would come a part of that. Um, That'll come in the next slide, but uh, letters to the parents have already been sent. They did a FERPA emergency medical form and also keep HIPAA. And there'll be a flyer, and also there'll be eventually information on our website for this. The timeline for this to start kicking off is not until June. Um, so we'll be having follow up meetings starting in June 7 um, as our committee for the grant the plan and start going through uh, the protocols and procedures of what they're looking at. Uh, to the latter part of August, they'll be looking at the education of training that nurse that we would be splitting with Tuskegee Valley and also getting our, getting our um, equipment here. And they're hoping to go live um, after Labor Day um, weekend, so the week of September 13th. Um, High definition camera with a zoom capability, computer, uh, otoscope, stethoscope, and thermoscope. And I don't know what those all those scopes are, um, but that comes with the equipment that, that we have with that grant. And I said timeline, weekly meeting start in June, end of August, and live after Labor Day. Frank, do we have to hire the nurse or do two hire the No. The, the committee here at this. The edge, the, um, ESC is going to be hiring the nurse for us in Tuskegee Valley. And I think the um, Stark County Department of Health is hiring their nurse for Minerva and um, oh. so it's it's a uh, it's I mean there are plenty of times I think our, our nurses see kids come in with pops and things and the parents won't treat them or take them to the doctor and maybe they just are able to talk to the mom and say, Hey, would you be willing to consent to, you know, your child has a cough. I've, they've been in my office for the last couple of days. Um, you know, could we get a telehealth appointment? I really don't want to take off work. But do you have about 15 minutes on a break? You could sit through a meeting if you want to with the doctor. And, you know, so that could be set up that way. Um, it also is set up that you know, staff could utilize it too to have a telehealth conference where they can set it up during a prep period or lunch period or after school or before school with a, with a doctor. So there are benefits in that aspect. This is for one year. Employees get to use it too. So we'll see where it goes. Hopefully the grant will be extended into the following year um, with it. So once we have this equipment, I'll get more information on, you know, the grant is not still available, what happens right now with our equipment moving forward. Um, I just want to highlight a couple bills in legislation, uh, property tax, House Bill 1.6. This would prohibit us as a board uh, for filing residential and agricultural complaints. So basically that is if someone says uh, they bought a house or bought agriculture um, and we can't go back and say, we feel that that house or that agriculture value for more money, well, this would eliminate us being able to do that. Now there are some things in there that we have to understand those steps. Um, you know, property was sold in a year for tax. The complaint was filed and the sale price was 
Now, a homeowner can still, with their taxes, still say, I'm paying too much tax to the county auditor and file a complaint. <coughs> if this was the tip of the board doing questions, or any board can do that. So that's something that's coming through potentially through legislation. And I kind of highlighted um, some of these. Why Bill 458 is important. Uh, be important to us would be if we were at the point where we need a levy and that we have uh, we need and put it in for May and it would maybe it passes or doesn't pass in May and we can file for August. Well, if you're eliminating an August election, then um, you're limiting our chances of passing a levy down to basically two times a year, November and then May. That is potential legislation that might pass. Right now, House Bill 583, uh, legislatures do know that uh, there are need for substitute teachers. So they have voted at this point in time so far, I think in the House, and it was passed at 80 to 10. So it will move over to the Senate. The last two years, we have utilized high school graduates as substitute teachers. Um, and that has helped us um, in the grand House Bill 497. Um, Elimination of retention under the third grade guarantee. So there's still a guarantee that, that currently they'll say there's still a third grade guarantee, but it won't be retained if they don't meet that guarantee. So that legislation is coming uh, through. Uh, potentially, I don't have any health votes or anything to that nature, but that is something that's new um, for us. Um, House Bill 4, uh, 601, uh, that would raise the employer contribution if this was passed into SERS and SDRS. So that would be a phase in factor over the next 10 years and we could be considerably, um, yeah, a lot, lot more money as far as uh, our support is staying in the House Bill two, uh, 290, that's the backpack <clears throat> bill where that's school vouchers. That's basically $1 billion in um, vouchers that would go out. But the math that goes with this particular bill doesn't coincide with what actually school districts get for kids for enrollment. So where they came up with their numbers, the legislatures or the, the, the people at BASA and OASBO aren't quite sure how they came up with how much money that they are going to be getting if they take a voucher and move to another district. But what we get and what they get through this this, this bill, um, that would definitely hurt us if that continues to go through. Um, I highlighted House Bill 327, 322, 616, and 529. Uh, this the fights of com concepts. Um, <clears throat> there's one of them is, that's tagged uh, don't say gay bill. Um, you know, won't be able to look at and there's some of them have penalties on, on staff members that parents call and complain or um, they feel their child's being singled out and then there's penalties that say that this ODE can come back and say, well you might you know if you don't know exactly what's involved in that, but um, it's, I've highlighted our, with our staff and our updates, just be careful what's more, if you have any legislatures that you know, let them know that, you know, we're, we're teaching leader and me, and to get along with everybody at school, we're not teaching the precise concept. Uh, one of these uh, also highlights that if you're in a transgender uh, transition or, or whatever, you, I don't know, whatever you call that there, you have to call them by their surname. So if they're going by, if you're going to a girl, you call them their boy name. If you're going to a girl, you call them by their girl name. So it's, it's, I'm worried for that for our staff. Uh, it just opens the Pandora's boxes on that. Um, one of them also is the, uh, the uh, transparency bill where we would have to post all of our concept maps, all of our uh, textbook literature. Um, we have a committee. Uh, Jody just highlighted it earlier about how we have board member, um, teachers, staff, um, parents that sit on a committee and pick our curriculums. Uh, so we, we, if we were within the, the, the limits of the law, but if this one comes, this, this one passes, then we have to put those to the website. It is now April, almost May, and if it passed, it has to be done by July 1. So I I'm concerned with that. I, and I have met with the legislature on that. See where that goes. 
Uh, House Bill 99, as far as the Army staff, that's with the Senate bill right now, and that's in subcommittee. Um, so they're working on whether to reinstate Army or allowing school districts to arm staff. And then the last one I have there is House Bill 582. Uh, there's legislation uh, for, that would cut to a If this one passes or for four terms, say that fast three times, um, would be reduced down to two, two years from four. Um, and kind of a side note on that one, the person who put this legislation out was actually kicked out of a board meeting um, for misbehaving. So I don't know if that's retaliation or what, um, but you know, I just get to know you guys here after a year or two, and hate to see turning over and she's here having an election again. But it could only be maybe in August and May we have an election because we eliminate the August one. Um, and our updates, uh, Jody talked about our math and our ELA curriculum earlier. Uh, tutoring finished for the season, finished this year uh, for the spring, and also we have already posted for summer, and we have staff that are interested, and that will begin around June 7th, um, somewhere in that vicinity. It will go for about five weeks, am I correct? Uh, we'll at that, and also we've already talked about our HVAC and roof work already. Uh, so just going to highlight those things with you and keep updates on that. Well, identifying gender uh, when you, you're transforming in the, how are we uh, looking at bathrooms at the situation? I mean, like right now, how are we looking? Or well, what are we doing? The legislation is they go to the restroom that they identify. So if they're identifying with a boy or girl, whichever, it's the legislation is that they go to the restroom that they say that they are. Um, I have not physically been in a girls' restroom at high school, but I know that, you know, I've assumed that they're all stalled. I know that the boys' restroom has the urinal. Right. Um, but, uh, that's where we, right now, that's what we have. What we're following. I would just think. They do have both of them. Oh, all the milk. They're not just the urinal. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I'm thinking it's first board has two urinals and probably about five milk. And then and, 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 and the, the athletic end. Thank you for that. Yep. <laughs> Moving right along, any uh, board addendums? Uh, from the one I gave you yesterday, as far as when draft from the draft that I gave you, it went live. On Monday, everything is current within your packet. Item six pool. Right to the pool. Treasurer's report. Yep.
and not going to be reduced 100% now. See at the top? No, I don't know, right in the middle. Oh, but. Hopefully when I actually get the software, I can do this myself, so it won't be in PDF form. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, so the, the month of March, um, we finished um, receiving all of our tax revenue in for the year. Um, I think I got my last one, the, the um, homestead. I just got that the other day. It was like 240000 So we've got all of our tax collections in. Um, Tuition is down due to us not receiving open enrollment payments anymore. And the expenses have also then corrected itself with not re, uh, having the open enrollment reduce, reducing our expenditure. So that's all corrected right now. So overall, um, from last year, our revenues are down 2.06%. So we're, we're doing so good with that. Um, salaries and benefits. Um, combined are up over $752,000, which with the increase in insurance and, and salary increases, that that's understandable. Um, it's been the trend for the last nine months. We've reconciled our books now, like I said, with all the um, foundation formula. So all those changes to, to reflect that new state um, fair share is done and all other expenses are down $1.6 million. So we've been able to control our expenses this year. So we're um, tracking for a significant cut in the expenses. And right now we're down 5.5% over last year. This just kind of shows our breakdown of expenditures again, which we all know, you know, salaries and benefits is, is our, our highest cost, but that's why we service our children and um, purchase services are next. But overall expenses, like I said, are down 5.5%. And year to date, um, total revenues is 17.7 million and total expenses is right around 15 million. So right now we're looking at, um, we have 151 days of cash on hand to, to get us through if something would happen. And then if you go to the other one, this shows just our general fund. This is based off the five-year forecast. Um, right now, we're at 75% of our forecasted amount. So um, right now, our revenues are sitting at 78% and our expenses are at 72%. So we're trending right around what I had forecasted in November. And just to highlight on the um, other reconciliation sheet in the permanent improvement fund, which that will pay the, um, the payment for the stadium payment. And then we have some extra. So right now we're sitting at 582,000, which is good. I'll have a payment due for that. Our first one's due in June and then the next, then we'll, so I'm, I'm kind of taking money and set that aside for that payment. And then, but we'll have about a hundred thousand dollars that will be extra that we'll be keeping for, for expenses. Um, kind of, I'd like to keep it as a rainy day fund, but I'll talk to the finance committee on that and make sure that that's our overall goal for that. So right now, um, finances are looking real good for year to date. Oh, keep moving. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, I need a first and a second. So I have to, uh, to approve the financial report for the month of March as was presented, the payment of bills as presented. We've got the minutes of the regular board meeting from March 14th. Um, the approved the natural gas purchase contract with interstate gas supply at a fixed price of $4.62 per MCF. That will cover us for four years from May 2022 to April 2026. Um, our lease agreement with for our proceeds machine is coming due. So the renewal of the 60 month lease with quadrant leasing for the postage machine. Um, our workers' compensation and unemployment compensation claims management services 
uh, to renew that. The period um, for renewal is next calendar year, but they start working on that in September. So they always do their renewal sooner. Um, that cost is $3,750. And then our renewal for our property um, liability and fleet through Ohio School Plan, which Highland Administrator Services carries the plan. That's for the period of May 1st of this year to, through April 30th of 2022 um, at a cost of $73,221. That went up slightly, and it was just basically because the building, um, the building appraisals went up that took our, but actually our fleet and our um, property or liability insurance went down some. So we only had about a, I think a $2,800 increase over last year. That goes to April next year, right? Yes. May 1st this year. What did I say this year? It says oh, 22. yes. <laughs> yes. 2023. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. And then we also received a $25,000 grant from the test uh, board of DD. Um, Heather worked on that and we received the check and that will help cover the cost of providing a behavior support specialist for next school year. And then I also had some mid-year adjustments to the appropriations and revenues for uh, this fiscal year. Yep. First prop, are we, we're in the group, but we're, are we- we were, we were actually group retrospective okay. this past, past couple of years, but we actually qualified this year for a group, which we can um, see the discounts up front rather than waiting to see. So- Do we, did we get any discount back? We haven't got that yet. I, I have not seen any this year. If it has been, it's been minimal yeah. for this year. So. so if I can have a first and a second. motion, we approve. Treasurer's report is presented. Roll call. Mrs. Host? Yes. Mrs. Grandison? Yes. Mr. Cottrell? Yes. Mr. Miles? Yes. And Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Thank you. Can I go back and ask? Um, well, I wanted to ask a question, but <laughs> so, no, we got these public record requests or whatever. Can I ask who, who requested like a copy of the March 2018 Board of Education minute meeting? Can you I can get that. Can you? Um, I can't remember. I don't, I, I just, so. I'm just curious, like the CEA and OPSI roster and then the PO vendor information letters for public record for a CA member that an amount of uh, funds uh, paid to Peppa and Wagner for the last five uh, school years. I was just curious. I'm just curious. I, have, you, you, I can share that with you. I have okay. a spreadsheet, but I was kind of just giving you an update that I, of what I had responded to for the month. So, but yeah, I can give you that who, who it's to. And I did come back to my office yesterday to free her, so I'll be working really? on them. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'll let you know. I was just, curi I was just, curi I was just curious if you know why and why the March 2018 Board of Education. I, I, I'm, I'm just curious. I don't know. I'll talk about that. Okay. Was, was that the two, what, you, what was the year of that one? 2018. March of 2018. 18. That was when some, somebody must have, it was when the, they were looking through the, um, website and there was one that was missed or something so when we went back and looked at it i was working with beth we we ended up zipping them a little bit different and made sure all of them was there but that one was, that missing. One was missing for some reason when oh. they converted over the website so okay, okay. Yeah. yeah but i, I, I don't well, know I just, why I, I mean i don't know what was okay we'll move on to the superintendent <laughs> recommendation yes uh, I'll go through these, give some a little brief explanation on some as we go through our items, but uh, uh, reass building reassignments for next year. Uh, the primary building will be at one, uh, 1,200 Eastport Avenue, and the elementary building will be at uh, 320 Trenton Avenue. Uh, so that'll house primary will be grade three school through kindergarten, and elementary will be grades one and two. Um, Following that move, uh, we'll also reposition our, some of our principals. So Mrs. Young will be at the primary building, the Eastport building, um, and she'll also be the co-preschool director. And also Mr. Page will move to the elementary, which will be Trenton Avenue. 
Um, can I ask talk real quick? Yes. I just, well, I, can you explain, I asked a question about, is it too late with keeping with the names or, or going back, or you said, or I'm sorry. I asked if Trenton can go back to Trenton and Eastport going back to Eastport, because now the, the primary is going over to Eastport and elementary is going over to Trenton. I, we spoke this morning, but can you let people know why? I, I, you yes, said the EMIS and yeah, IRN numbers. Um, we contacted the Health Department of Education and uh, due to various reasons for uh, building reassignment and asset allocation, they just said they couldn't do that at this time. Um, but they, like I said this morning, if we made a move for next year to do it, then I get them more time. I'm not entirely sure on the explanation as far as why the Health Department said it just can't be done, but at this time, it's just we're already, we should have already been moving, been moving into next school year's initialization already. And we're probably about two months behind at this time. <laughs> um, accepting the, the resignation of Travis Pullen as head wrestling coach, um, we have the next head wrestling coach here, um, Kyle Warner. Uh, we'll employ him as wrestling coach for, for next year, pending proper credentialing and licensures. So I want to welcome Kyle, and at the end of the meeting, we'll kind of maybe visit with Kyle. Um, we have a committee member for math, uh, committee and Heather Watkins, and also approving the primary and elementary and intermediate staff members to pay $20 per hour for attendance sheet for building realignment committee, building realignment committee meetings. And they did have a meeting before uh, spring break, and they are planning other meetings before school is out. Um, and another new face that we'll have here next year will be Colin Clark. Uh, Colin will be employed here as a third grade teacher for next school year. Um, Colin is behind Kyle. Um, so we can extend our um, welcome to him uh, after our meeting. Uh, we have some resignations that we'll be acting on. Jordan Beebe, Prince High School Social Studies teacher. Uh, Jordan's re resigning at the conclusion of the school year. Cheryl Shaw is going to be Higher, and that'll be June 30th, and Steve Pounds is going to retire. And both of them are custodians, um, so we'll be looking for custodians for next year. Uh, approved unpaid medical leave for Sarah Trimmer from April 4th through May 3rd of this school year. We have some non-renewals with some winter athletic supplementals. Um, we're also going to, uh, item K, uh, want to approve um, Harris Ong, and he's in the back row. He's going to coach our varsity girls golf for next year. Or varsity boys golf, I'm sorry. I put you in a panic here. <laughs> um, and John McCluskey uh, for summer weightlifting. Um, Lynn Mahaffey. Uh, Lynn is a cook out at the high school. Um, she just finished her, she had finished her 90-day probationary period. That was after our March board meeting. So her limited contract is retroactive to March 30th. Um, Annette. <clears throat> Excuse me, Annette Mathias is on an unpaid medical leave absence from March 15th through May 15th. Uh, we have some summer custodians uh, due to some retirements, so we actually upped our, our help for the summer. Um, Susie Shepard, Jen Bullock, uh, Brianna Baker, Julie Galloway, and Trish Moore. Um, rescinding Mustang Transportation, uh, the contract we had with them, and that's of uh, March 16th. I explained that one a little bit. Uh, we, they were transporting a student to a um, RG Drag Career Center, which had a, um, a behavioral unit located there. Uh, they refused to transport the student home one evening. Uh, so, so we have in the next aspect of it, we're, we hired Benjamin Transportation to begin hiring uh, and transporting that student to that school, along with um, our Union Hospital Workwell Health Services for bus physicals, Consortium contract with the ESC as far as uh, Title uh, three for limited English, and also our student insurance. And that student insurance is placed on our website uh, for people to download and apply for if they want student insurance. We have an overnight trip for the claim on FFA, and they will be going to the state convention in May 4th through the 6th, uh, and also approve the substitute teachers that we have uh, listed. And due to the building realignment and per the contract, uh, we have some rifts that we have tacked on um, that are listed. And there will be bid bump meetings and postings uh, 
forthcoming. Uh, we have the L the aid bit bump meeting scheduled along with the cook, and I know that custodians will have a bit bump meeting, and the secretary will be done just through a posting. Any other questions that we have regarding these items? Can you explain when you uh, when you when you interview and hire? Can you explain like the process um, that uh, I, I received a phone call and uh, people believe that uh, we're not putting our ego or our egos and our personal agendas behind when we interview? And it was brought up. I know everyone in this room is a professional in some sort, but uh, can you explain what you look like and how the interviewing and uh, hiring process that you look at or how you go uh, with you and any other uh, administrator? I mean, we, we go through the process of uh, you accept your applications. Uh, from there, then you do a, a, a thinning through base of credentials and what you're looking for. Uh, then you bring in your candidates and you go through the interview process with a list of questions based off of how they're answering their questions uh, and the, the committee that's involved. Um, and then you try to Send that even to your final candidate. So it's it's a pretty thorough you know, uh, process. Uh, I know that our principals have sat through several of them with them for interviews, and it's a, it's a very professional process. So. Do we let the candidates know when we've chosen somebody uh, if they've been chosen or not been chosen yes. for their evening? I believe that's just professional courtesy, whether that is a phone call or whether that's a letter, depending upon, you know, how that is, uh, how that is done. Uh, but usually they are notified. Well, I have one, one last question that I, I got a phone call on a couple. Um, comp time. Who's eligible for comp time? Who approves comp time? And are we abusing comp time? So who who's an el who's eligible for comp time? Are teachers or is OPSI OPSI employees eligible for o comp time? OPSIs are eligible and they have they can accumulate up to forty hours a week with of comp time. Uh, as CA. Forty hours, forty hours, forty hours of comp time for an entire year. Uh, so accumulate at one time. So that's in their contract. That's in their that's contract. In the contract. CA, are they eligible for comp time? Typically, it's a, no, it's number of days. Uh, you know, not that I'm not a, a fan of doing comp time, but if you, if you work for this and then you don't have to do that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that, but we haven't had it at this point, in my knowledge. Um, and then as far as the, when I came here, it was a, uh, practice that uh, the, the central office staff had you know, comp time for you know, working on days where the offices were closed, the schools were closed. Now, I, I actually sent him an email about that today because the only contracts I have are the superintendent <clears throat> and the treasurers. And the contracts are for 260 days, which is five days a week, 52, day, 52 weeks a year. So the contract is for 12 months. So I don't understand, or I guess maybe it's just me. I have an issue because the contract says you're supposed to work, but we're given comp time, even though you're supposed to work anyway, because your contract says you're supposed to work. I just actually just said, I, was, I had the same questions from people that Aaron did. So I reached out to Kim this morning. I'm like, hey, how does this work? I'm just trying, and you may have emailed me back after I emailed you the second time. For the follow-up, I haven't checked my emails. Yeah, I just said that we had just was doing what was past practice. But, but does what, what I say make I said, sense? Yeah, and I said, I see what you're saying. I said, we can discuss, yeah, yeah. yeah we can discuss this. Yeah, because the contract's for the entire year, so you're supposed to work anyway. There is no comp time in, in my world anyway. You know, the contract's 12 months, 260 days. You get vacation, you get holiday. What, so what about what if you work over? Like so, you're like today your day started. I'm just thinking off top of my head here. If if an employee's day is normally a day, so the day starts at 
what seven, what's the central? I don't know. All the normally, I mean, we're all, all here by seven thirty. Eight to four. Eight to four. But, so you know, like today, we're here until ten. Four. So do you get the? So shouldn't should shouldn't that be? If you work, if the contract says you're to work two hundred days a year at at eight hours a day, but it doesn't. But, the but contract you, states. But oh, if you God. if you're working, <clears throat> you're working twelve hour days in a forty hour work week, and you're putting in. You know, I'm not, I'm saying when you're not if you're staying over on your own, on, you know. But if you're working, this is a mandatory thing. Should they not be given? I mean, I give my employees if you stay over and, and do something, then you get that in comp time or paid time. So I don't know how can, a, you, how can you request an employee to continue to work past their 12 or 10 or eight hours, five or six days a week? You know, they could be here 12 hours a day. I think you should get some. I mean, we but do the, the contract doesn't. Oh, does it say hours, right? Days. It says, days. It says, it says days. days. So if a day is eight hours. But it's not identified. And if you're a private employer, you can't give comp time. You have to pay time and a half. That's right. the law. Well, so all I'm saying is that when we get into this, this, it, it's very, the contracts are very specific. It, and again, I only had yours. So unfortunately, I had to use you guys in that scenario. I don't have any other contracts. But if, if it's for 260 days, and I think, and I looked at Kim's, and it says there's specific language in there about <laughs> duties, you know, different times because of the work. It, the contract doesn't say anything about hours. To me, we're double paying. If, well, if, if you've got a contract for 260. Problem. You, could get, you could get in trouble with <laughs> wage an hour because everybody has a, even though you have a salary, you have an hourly wait so um, if you say to somebody you have your salary and you you have to well then 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 you call wage an hour what well, happened we can't I've take them back with wage an hour on that. if your salary, if somebody's person, salary you can't take them to hourly if yeah. your salary i know this because i paid thousands of dollars out if your salary it's based on x amount of hours anything over them it's it's a given and i think it's 50 i forget what it is if you work over that, you're technically entitled to overtime. But don't quote me, because I, I had a wage an hour audit, and I paid out thousands of dollars. Do you have a, I thought they were salary, and they they keep in a time slip, and they jacked me for all kinds. Of, so so I don't know if public slip. employees are different, but I can tomorrow. I will check with my girl at wage an, at, at, for wage an hour. You can't, you can't say to somebody, I'm going to make you salary. And then I'm going to work you 120 hours a week. You still have to, you, you can't do that. But I can find, I'll find out for sure. But I know this for a fact because I wrote the big check out in my company. Did you have a contract with that person though? Yep. Okay. So now I do. Now I do. And it states any, and you have to specify, I, I specify anything over this, you will get paid. You have to get paid time and a half. Now I can, I can double check that. I will double check that. I'm not, you know, but I, 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 won't, I don't know exactly what year it was, but I remember writing the checks out and it wasn't fun. Well, I got cited by wage an hour and the employees got the back money. And they were, you know, like office people that had salary jobs where they had, you know, and like I said, and I know my dad was a salary employee. He was the same way at his company. Because when I told him I was doing it, he said, oh, you're going to get hit. And I think sometimes it would depend on that position. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm salary at my company, and I don't keep a timesheet. And if I work 12 hours, but I work 12 hours. So if you, if, if you check wage an hour. Which we have with our attorney it. as well, because um, there was conversation on our salary employees who do snow work and the way we calculate that. And we were told specifically, don't track the hours. Make sure you do like a, a bonus or something like that that you're gonna give them that you think would cover that. You don't take a salary person back to an hourly wage because that will, that will get you in trouble. All I'm saying is, if we have a contract for 260 days and it's 
that's a work year. I feel like if we're paying comp time for time, they're already supposed to be here because their contracts aren't like Oopsie who says I get, or I don't know about Oopsie or CEA, I have five calamity days or whatnot. Like that's built into their contract for the administrative contracts that I looked at. It's, it's very specific on days. It has nothing to do with hours. So, and I asked the question this morning too, and Kim was emailing, and Kim and I were emailing back, and then I. Yeah, let me check. So. I just don't want us to get in trouble with the wage and hour thing, and I think that wage and hour they're pretty powerful. Well, then I well, and I don't disagree. The Department of Labor is for sure, but yeah. if that's the case, then the contracts need changed. Yeah, I think it needs to be specified in the contract if if we're going to get into that. Yeah, uh, and I'll I'll do some checking too with that, and we can check. I do know that they came in and said it. So I don't know that. I don't, I'm sorry, Aaron. I didn't. No, mean to I just uh, it was brought to my attention, and then I was like, I don't, you know, I really didn't know how it, how it worked, and uh, you know, who was eligible for comp time, who's not eligible, and uh, I mean, like we, you know. For me, I'm an hourly employee. You know, I can't sit up at UPS. Uh, you know, I work Mondays. I can't sit up there on the clock all day uh, just because, uh, you know, I want to. <laughs> From what I understand, Kim, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's if they work during the five calamity days, that's when comp time is paid. That's or out accrued, right? That's the only that, time? Yeah. That's, the, that was the practice prior to me arriving. Yeah, that's how no, I'm yeah, not, when I'm not I get, saying, arrived. Too. I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming Kim. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just trying to understand how it works. So the only way anyone gets comp time is those five days of calamity. That's it. They're not accruing any other way. Mm -mm. Not as far as the staff is here and principal staff. No, the the OP staff. <laughs> The OPC staff. Well, whenever, theirs is by contract. I get that. Right. Yeah, I'm, they they have two choices. They can either take it in wage or they can take it in comp time. So there's a second. Yeah, and theirs is by contract. So I I completely I completely get that. So so this is just calamity. This ain't this ain't over. You're working like a twelve hour day and then turn around. No, it's if there's a comp time. No, oh. it's if there's a calamity day and they come in, they get comp time for that. Even though the contracts are 260 days, again, I am not picking on YouTube. You just happen to be the only contracts that I have. Yeah, well, I'm just trying I mean, that I could look at. I mean, I mean, honestly, that's easily fixable. Yeah, I just I, it, it's it's easily fixable. So I yeah. mean, we've had you know, the conversation regarding that. So anybody that doesn't have within their contract, you know, right. principals work 215, 220 days, whatever their contract it is. They'll follow suit with that. I think, though, we should look. I mean, I'm just trying to be fair across the board. I'm trying to be fair. You know, it's not fair. I think we should also look into not, I'm talking across the board, if you do above and beyond on things that are required, that we shouldn't make an allowance. I mean, I'm going to check in to see what other schools do, but. I'm also going to check in with wage and hours. I don't know how that applies to public schools. I don't. I, I'm honest. I don't understand. I don't, but I didn't realize you were just talking calamity. I thought you was talking about being here till night till nine o'clock and ten o'clock at night, and maybe took some comp time. Days I don't even a long day. Huh? Days a long day. Yeah, it's a long day. And then you know, then we have ball games you can go to, and then you know, you know, we have Saturdays. We have NFA banquets, and then we have. The Foundation banquet exactly. on a Saturday. Exactly. So I, um, I just think there's I, I thought that's what we were talking about. But I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'll do some check. Well is I, that I mean is that part of comp time or is that part of your job description? Right. That's part of the stories and responsibilities of going to banquets on Saturday. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean it, it, the same thing could be said. What time did your day start today? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a long day for you know what I'm saying though. No, I mean <laughs> My, you know, my day then, started at 4 15. No, I was in my office by 5 30. So, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm I, not trying to be unfair. I'm just saying if that's yeah. a, something we're going to do, it needs to be reflected 
It needs to be talked about, discussed, and reflected in the contracts. Because as of now, the contracts are vague. So. That's a conversation for you guys to get your information. And yeah, that's what we want. Thank you. Thank you. So if we have a motion and a second for the item, uh, we have listed. I'll make a motion. A second. Roll call. Mrs. Host? Yes. Mr. Miles? Yes. Mr. Cottrell? Yes. Mrs. Grandison? Yes. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. I don't have Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the board uh, will have an executive session uh, for discipline uh, with matters to be kept uh, confidential. Our uh, next board meeting, May 9th. May 9th at 6 o'clock. No Did action you, to follow. Steve. No action to follow. Um, if you want to take a minute to welcome to the newcomers. Before, I want to say something. Before we uh, go back or do our executive session, if you guys uh, noticed or followed the American Idol, uh, there's a lot of, was you? It's, uh, there's a lot of ties here at Claymont. Super cool. Uh, here in the front row, uh, we have an aunt and a, and a cousin for uh, Emerson Flora. Flora. Uh, we have uh, her mom, uh, Autumn, uh, 1995 graduate here at Claymont, and a grandma who served, you know, 30 years as a secretary here. So we, uh, as a district, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to ask and awesome to, to turn on. And usually I'm not... Uh, Watch an American Idol, uh, but it, it is pretty cool when you know somebody, and uh, there's a lot of ties. Oh, huh, Riley. And she's in the top, <laughs> top ten. Yep. I thought they couldn't. Have, why they had to wait to the very almost the end? Yeah. <laughs> right. But um, I'm not real computer savvy, which we, Aaron and I have already talked about this. But I've even figured out how to do the email. I got it. I got it. Did you vote? You voted? I voted. You voted. <laughs> 30 votes. The, Jason, we've all voted our 30 votes. But take the time. She's on again Sunday, I believe, at 8 o'clock. And she's also, I think we have to vote again Sunday, don't we? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not an American Idol person. But everybody can vote except 30 times with the app, the email, and your phone. So please do vote for her. She is good. She's good. Is she excited? So do you need a yeah. you, want a, you want a motion? Or you want a motion, motion and second to go into executive session. So I'll make a motion. We go into executive session. No action to follow. I'll second. I'm 7-17. Do we have a few minutes to... Roll call? Uh, yeah. Mrs. Host? Yeah. Mrs. Yes. Grandison? Yes. I'm sorry. Mr. Cottrell? Yes. Mr. Miles? Yes. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Can we, before we go into executive